Hi, my name is Josh Lou. I am a research scholar from Oxford Academy, California, United States. Thank you for this opportunity to present my research on consumer recycling behavior determinants for e-waste, especially small e-waste. The title of my paper is Developing an Extended Theory of Planned Behavior Model for Small E-Waste Recycling, an Analysis of Consumer Behavior Determinants. There are five parts to my presentation. Introduction, Objectives of the Study, Methodology, Key Findings, and Conclusions and Implications. Waste electrical and electronic equipment, we, also called e-waste, has quickly become the world's fastest growing waste stream. However, it only has a 17.4% recycling rate, according to the Global Waste Monitor 2020. Recoverable resources valued at 57 billion US dollars were dumped or burned in 2019. There is a pressing need to understand consumer behaviors related to Wii recycling in order to address this important issue at both the global and regional scales. Small WE, or SWE in this paper, is defined as a small household WE that is less than 50 centimeters on its longest side. Used mobile phones account for the largest proportion of SWE as people constantly upgrade their phones for new styles and functions. Unfortunately, the collection rate of SWE is lower than 10% globally due to stockpiling at home and improper disposal via the general waste or private informal channels, leading to great resource losses and environmental and health risks. Consumer recycling behavior has been considered to strongly influence the weed collection rates. The theory of planned behavior, TPB, which was developed by Ajahn, has been one of the most popular rational choice theories used in behavioral research. Researchers have applied and extended the TPB as a conceptual framework in relation to weed recycling behavior determinants. As shown in Figure 1, the e-waste recycling behavior of an individual is shaped by the intention, which can be predicted by a combination of three themes. Attitude, meaning what do I think? Subjective norms, what do my family and friends think? Perceived behavioral control, is it difficult for me to do it? And other factors. However, there are two existing problems with the current TPB. First, results on the impact of TPB determinants varied greatly across research studies due to differences in situations depending on the country. Secondly, there is no thorough model developed specific to the topic of SWE. Systematic studies on consumer behavior for sweet recycling have been lacking in the literature. A new theoretical framework incorporating the sweet specific behavior determinants is urgently needed in order to develop effective sweet recycling intervention strategies and policy designs. There are two objectives in this paper. First, to review how the TPB is applied in the literature related to consumer behavior intention for we recycling and determine the most significant TPB predictors by comparing their standardized influence coefficients across various studies. Secondly, to identify additional behavior determinants specific to SWE recycling and thus develop a new TPB SWE theoretical framework by integrating the TPB model with these new determinants in order to improve the predictability of consumer SWE recycling behavioral intention. For methodology, in total over 30 peer-reviewed journal articles published within the last 15 years were reviewed. They were selected from Scopus and High Impact Factor journals via Scopus and Google Scholar search engines. For each objective, different combinations of keywords listed on the screen were used when searching. Objective 1 focused on the articles that studied we recycling behavior determinants by using multiple regression analysis to determine beta influence coefficients of TPP predictors. Objective 2 focused on the articles that studied SWE recycling behavior determinants. Based on the results from the systematic literature review, a new TBB SWE theoretical framework was developed. This paper led to three key findings. First, as shown in Figure 3a, out of nine TBB-based studies, three studies, 33%, found that attitude was the most dominant TBB theme and the best predictor of consumer recycling behavior intention. 44% and 22% of the studies claimed that subjective norms and perceived behavior control had the strongest influence instead. The results varied largely across different studies. When calculating mean influence coefficients across studies, as shown in figure 3b, attitude had the strongest average effect, 0.331, and subjective norms, 0.276, and perceived behavioral control, 0.196. In summary, even though all three TPB themes played an important role in predicting the recycling behavior, 
the extent of influence of each TPP theme varies largely among those studies. This analysis indicates that more variables, such as the size of we and the demographic variables, need to be added to the TPP model to better predict consumer recycling behavior. Based on key finding number one, the following part of the paper was specifically focused on the type of small we to address our second objective. Table 1 here lists the findings from 18 research articles that studied SWE recycling behavior determinants. The articles are grouped by their study affiliation to continents and countries, as modeled in Shevchenko's review paper. We will come back and look into this table in more detail when discussing our key finding number 3. For key finding number 2, 8 SWE specific determinants are identified from the literature and categorized into the existing 3 TBP themes. Consumer sentimental attachment, data security concern, and perceptions of remaining value are categorized in the attitude theme, small size or less visibility, and laws and regulations specific to SWE belong to the subjective norms theme, economic incentives, preference to sell to informal channels, and knowledge of what, where, and how to recycle SWE are categorized into the perceived behavioral control theme. Table 2 here presents the detailed description and definition for each SWE specific determinant, along with its corresponding references. Now, based on the data from tables 1 and 2, the frequency of each SWE determinant, measured by the number of research articles that identify it as a prevalent influencing factor, is graphed in figure 4. Economic incentives, identified in 83.3% of the articles, perceptions of remaining value, 77.8%, and knowledge of what, where, and how to recycle SWE, 77.8%, appear to be the most influential factors in predicting SWE recycling intention. They belong to the TBB themes of perceived behavioral control, attitude, and perceived behavioral control, respectively. As part of the key finding number three, for some SWE specific determinants, their extent of influence differs across various regions and countries. In addition, several patterns revealed in Table 1 resulted in a few interesting findings as follows. A. Economic incentives and perceptions of remaining value appear as the most prevalent influencing factor across all countries, contrary to Shevchenko's claim that economic incentives is the dominating WE recycling determinant only in Asian and African countries. This discrepancy could be explained by the specific characteristics of SWE, which was not the focus of Shevchenko's review. With respect to SWE, especially used mobile phones, consumers report strong perceptions of their remaining values across all the studied countries. Therefore, it makes sense that any economic incentives, such as a buyback scheme, can greatly influence consumer SWE recycling behavior, regardless of whether the consumers are in developed or developing countries. B. Knowledge of what, where, and how to recycle SWE is a prevalent determinant found for European and American consumers, but not as much as for Asian and African consumers. This difference related to regions may be due to the prevailing existence of the illegal, informal channels on Asian and African countries as shown in the table. For all of these countries, preference to sell to informal channels is marked as a dominant determinant, while none of the studies in Europe and American marked it important. Because the informal channels in Asian and African countries have made it very convenient for consumers to sell their SWE for profit, their how-to knowledge through formal recycling becomes less relevant. While there are much less illegal channels available in the European and American countries, the lack of knowledge of what to and how to becomes dominant and results in a great percentage of SWE stored at home or delayed in being returned to recycling centers. C. The laws and regulations specific to SWE determinant does not appear to be important for American consumers as much as for European and Asian consumers. In fact, the current laws and regulations being employed in America are mainly for regulating manufacturing companies in regards to green product redesigns rather than directly regulating consumers' recycling behavior. On the contrary, there have been regulations in place in European and Asian countries, such as the UK WE regulations, that regulates how used mobile phones should be recycled by the consumers. Considering that these laws and regulations have been found significant for European and Asian consumers, we assume that if more laws and regulations are implemented directly at American consumers, the recycling rates would be improved significantly. D. Sentimental attachment was not reported important for American consumers, but was a prevalent determinant in some studies involving European consumers. As a matter of fact, Wilhelm's team surveyed 254 American university students 
and reported that respondents were attached to the benefits provided by the mobile phone, but not to the phone itself. This could imply that the lack of sweet recycling among the American consumers may be due to other factors, such as convenience. Similar to America, most studies in Asia did not report sentimental attachment as an important determinant except for India. Kumar, 2019, compared China to India. While Sui was considered having more monetary value among the Chinese, it was perceived having more emotional value among Indians. This difference in cultural perception to Sui is an important factor to consider when developing culture-specific Sui recycling interventions. In summary, through the data analysis of Table 1 and Figure 4, the additional psychological and situational factors specific to Sui recycling have been identified, along with some demographic variables such as gender, age, income, and education level. Thereby, a new theoretical framework, namely TBB SWE, as shown in Figure 5, is developed by integrating the original TBB model with the additional SWE specific determinants colored in blue. The new TBB SWE model is aimed to improve the predictability of the behavioral intention specific to SWE. Note that when using the new model, it is important to keep in mind that the extent of influence of each determinant may vary by region and countries as discussed earlier. This paper is significant for the following contributions. First, it conducts a global literature review and data analysis on consumer recycling behavior determinants for e-waste, especially small e-waste. Through such a systematic review across numerous circumstances, it provides insight into tailoring the needs of improving SWE collection rates at various regional and country levels. Secondly, this paper develops a new TBB SWE theoretical framework to fill the existing gap in the literature, to inform future research on SWE recycling, and to provide recommendations for research-based behavioral intervention strategies and policy designs globally. For implications, successful intervention strategies should address as many as the SWE-specific recycling behavior determinants identified in the TBB SWE framework. There have been several successful interventions, including online recycling and government's buyback schemes, enhancing economic incentives and convenience while reducing the introduction of SWE into the private and illegal waste sectors. However, other SWE-specific determinants still lack intervention strategies, such as the sentimental attachment and data security concern. For instance, if the SWE collection centers can help protect data security by removing personal information contained in the old mobile phones, would more consumers be likely to let go of them? For another example, Casey's research team reported the effectiveness of doorstepping campaigns in household waste recycling because they provided convenience and combated residents' lack of how-to knowledge. However, such interventions have not been applied to SWE nor tested in the context of SWE recycling yet. In summary, while research on consumers' recycling behavior is already scarce, more studies regarding the intervention strategies addressing the SWE-specific behavior determinants will be urgently needed for increasing the SWE collection rates. Here are the references for this presentation. Thank you for your time.